Hey guys, it's Linux Next here. In today's video, we're going to be setting up the Seamless Co-op mod on Elden Ring. As uh, seen some, I haven't really seen any videos of anyone really doing a tutorial about how to set up the Seamless Co-op mod on Linux specifically. Uh, most of them are on Windows, or sometimes they are on the Steam Deck, which means that it is a Linux tutorial. But I think for people that are using Linux desktop or Steam Deck users, uh, you know, I would like to just do a tutorial of how to set this up because I have used this mod. Uh, you know, like two years ago I used it and I followed off like a Reddit forum post of how to do it and it did indeed work and I was like, well, you know, there's still no YouTube videos that I don't think exist that much, uh, either because they don't have enough views um, or they're just not existing. So I was like, well, I should make a video on it. So that's what we're going to do in today's video is going to set up the Seamless Cob mod on Elden Ring. So of course, if you want to get the mod, uh, you just go to the Nexus mod website and you just search for Seamless Cob mod or you just search it in your search engine. You should be able to find a link to it. And we just want to go to files and then do the manual download. We can do the slow download and it's going to download the zip format for us. Then after downloading, of course, you just want to extract the .zip and it will create a folder for us. And then when we go into it we want to copy the contents here and we want to find the location of the Elden Ring uh, game that is installed on your computer so for me it's in extra games I want to go to our Steam library Steam apps common and then find the Elden Ring folder and then we go into game and then we want to paste the following uh, items inside of this folder here now after it's done uh, being pasted, we want to go into the folder and then what we want to do is open up the settings.ini file because uh, this is where we get to customize the mod so we can do things like allow invaders, uh, you know, death debuffs, uh, allow summons, etc. So for like me, I would probably not allow invaders because I don't want people invading my world when I'm playing with my mates. And then the most important part is we want to set up a call password so that it, it is you know, secure and anyone uh, with the same password can join now this is where you need to create a rather unique password that other people aren't going to think of so when I thought of like doing a password uh, I know one application that I actually downloaded today and it creates different uh, random passwords and I thought it was really cool and it's literally called password so you can grab this from your, your your store and then we can just go to like a generator here and we can create a easily just create a password uh, and then we could just easily just copy this if we wanted to and then as you can see here we uh, paste the password in we need to leave these spaces here so then it actually works properly and you should have already uh, seen this because of all the other contents here it's all nice and spaced out properly for it to work and then the next part is we need a .co2 uh, save file. Now for people that don't know, uh, on Elden Ring, uh, it usually uses a .sl2 file, which it says right here, it says in the vanilla game, this is a .sl2 file. So uh, to easily just like, if you want to grab your main file, like save file of Elden Ring, you can just rename the .sl2 to a .co2, and then that will easily work with the mod. With the, um, but uh, for me, I lost my .co2 file uh, from two years ago. So what I had to do was uh, grab a uh, level 150 save file and then use that as a .co2 file for the mod. So one of the problems uh, with this mod is that you can't, um, I mean, you can add it through Vortex if you wanted to use something like Steam Tinker Launch, uh, which is a type of helper for setting up mod launches or other things like shaders and all that. Uh, but when you set up Vortex and you try to add uh, the mod, the mod.exe to Vortex, uh, it doesn't work. It decides to just launch and then crash. So you have to basically add the seamless cop.exe uh, as a non-Steam game, which is pretty easy to do. Uh, so basically you just go add game, add non-Steam game. So then this uh, part will come up and we just want to go to the folder of Elden Ring. So for me, it's in extra uh, games and then we go to to Elden Ring, go to game, and then we want to go to the ERSC underscore launcher dot exe. We just want to add this and then go add selected program. So it's already added for me. Uh, I've changed a little bit. I've renamed it to seamless cob mod and I've added a little image to make it look a bit nicer instead of just some blank dot uh, exe is a non steam game. So the next thing that we can do is I guess we can go into compatibility and you can force a uh, Proton version if you want to. I am. I'm just using Proton Experimental Bleeding Edge. 
uh, but you don't have to do that. It's just going to use uh, whatever is default in your settings. So for me, it would be Proton 9, and that should work perfectly fine. There's no uh, issues with using that. But if there is issues, uh, of course, you can change it and force it to Proton Experimental or Proton GE if, if that's your preferred method. And you, what you want to do is uh, click play, and it's going to create a wine prefix for us, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically just a fake Windows drive in a sense where uh, you know you go inside of it and it looks very familiar to how the Windows directory looks like on your C drive. So uh, by default, it's going to create it on your main drive of where Steam is installed. So for me, it's like on my, my main NVMe drive. I want to go to dot Steam, then Steam, and then of course uh, Steam apps. And we want to go to the compact data because that is where Proton or Steam likes to create these wine prefixes, which is kind of a bit of annoying sometimes because it's a bunch of random numbers and when you create a non-steam game it doesn't tell you the the number uh, folder so you kind of have to guess here of where uh, that uh, has been created for the mod but for me it's in uh, 347322 which doesn't matter because it's going to be randomly generated for each person so you're going to have to figure out uh, where Elden Ring uh, the, the seamless code mod prefix was created which folder it is and then you want to go to the uh, the prefix drive C uses steam user app data roaming Elden Ring and then go in and then you can see that I already have a .co2 file so this is where you put your save file because I made a mistake when I was setting this up and I was really confused I was like why wasn't it detecting my save file and it's because it creates its own prefix as uh, with normal like Elden Ring Elden Ring would have its its own prefix with its own save file so you think you put the .co2 in there but no uh, this actually creates a separate prefix for the save file for some reason uh, so when you want to paste it in here and that's basically it you can now just click play and you should be able to uh, basically play with your friends when you when you launch it up here it's going to launch Elden Ring on, on top of that and then you're going to be able to easily just connect with your friends and I'll show you some gameplay of the um, you know like the mod is actually working okay and as you can see it is launching properly now we'll see if it actually shows up and says that it's you know in that seamless carb mod and there you go you can see it says welcome to the seamless carb mod for Elden Ring this is a free mod if you have paid for any launches or packages with this mod then you have been scammed so beware I told you guys to go to Nexus mods if you buy it uh, from someone uh, that is someone's trying to scam you uh, this mod uses a separate save and does not connect to the matchmaking service it does not contain an anti-cheat so it does disable the anti-cheat you can't connect to the servers uh, it's completely separate from the main Elden Ring game so when it comes to like a save file like as you can see here here's my save file it's called Gary V2 I'm level 200 and then we can just load in here uh, load into the world that me and my friends have been playing for the past week now and the mod itself is a bit sketchy it does have a lot of bugs and issues that most of them have been solved but there's still like some like when you ride um torrent for example which is the horse in Elden Ring or I don't know if it's actually a horse, uh, but it's invisible sometimes for your friends or sometimes for you, and then sometimes it isn't, and it's, it is for them, and it's all over the place when it comes to that uh, issue. Uh, there's other things like cutscenes sometimes appear and they're like glitchy. Um, sometimes uh, you can fall through the map depending on what's going on. Uh, there is a lot of problems, but as you can see here, it is working. And if you want to open your world uh, for your friends, you would just use a tiny great pot, and then as you can see here, it's gonna do that animation and say open world to wanderers and then that's where you'd click it and then your friends can connect uh, to the game which is uh, pretty um, cool that you can use this mod on Linux rather easily and um, oops I just killed a shape there whoopsies uh, but yeah it's really cool that you can just uh, use this mod and play with your friends so if you guys did enjoy this video I definitely uh, would give it a like you definitely can subscribe to the channel as we are super close to 5,000 subscribers which is um, truly awesome I, I thank you all for subscribing to the channel and continue to watch the videos that I create and all the uh, Linux content stuff and uh, at some point I, I may start expanding upon Linux things like I've tried like doing a keyboard review um, I may start expanding into more like camera stuff I may start expanding into audio stuff as I know a decent amount uh, about those things also uh, but if you guys you know did enjoy this video uh, I, I thank you you definitely can give it a, a like on it and I thank you to my members also I'll show a screenshot of, of them I really do appreciate you guys for you know giving me money like every month uh, I really do 
do appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video, which hopefully will be either like a Linux Mint review on the, the 22 beta or 22 official whenever that uh, arrives, or it's either going to be the uh, Cosmic desktop alpha review also, because I, I do have Cosmic installed right now, uh, all the packages and stuff like that. I've been using the um, Cosmic uh, Epoch version for like a couple of months now, just testing it every now and then. But besides that, yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Peace.